Welcome back here on Ligna stage. So we are listening now to a lecture from Patrick Freeman, Group Chief of Technology and Officer by Microtech. So the lecture is about artificial intelligence offers real advantages. Thank you. Danke. Uh, guten Tag. Good afternoon. Thank you in advance for attending my presentation today. Artificial intelligence brings real benefits. I'm Patrick Freeman. I'm the Group Chief Technology Officer at Microtech. Now, uh, being Chief Technology Officer gives me license to be, I think, a professional nerd. And like all professional nerds, I should have a background in robotics, which fortunately I do. In this case, uh, quadruped uh, dynamic simulation. But I'd like to think of our scanners at Microtech, our log and lumber scanners, as being like log and lumber scanning robots, in that they have eyes, uh, they have a brain, and they're manipulating things. Not as much robotic arms, but sometimes, but at least with control systems and conveying systems. So I've been in the wood products industry for more than 30 years, and even though that's a long time, that's not me in the wagon, in front of our historic office in Corvallis, Oregon, where I worked for Lucidine Technologies in the image processing and artificial intelligence groups. And there, our flagship product was uh, known as GradeScan, now known as the Microtech Lucidine. And this is a high-speed lineal planar system. Um, and this, uh, the two takeaways from this slide is to see that this system has employed, employed full deep learning uh, with 25, now 50 outputs since early 2017. And then in 2020, early 2020, Microtech acquired Lucidine. And out in Corvallis, Oregon, we couldn't be happier with that because not only did this merger uh, enable us to introduce more of Microtech's innovative products in North America, but it also allowed us to unify the artificial intelligence teams between Italy, the United States, Sweden, and Finland in one global AI team that allows us to combine the experience, uh, the tools, um, the labeling, which we'll talk about a lot in this, uh, in this presentation, and the diversity of ideas in order to introduce deep learning into all of our products, as we're showing here from log to final product. Um, we also will see near the end of this presentation how this deep learning uh, from log to final product can have individual scanners training each other. So a little bit of how this presentation is going to go. We're going to talk a, just a little bit of machine learning history. We're going to show examples of deep learning in action in logs and lumber. We're going to talk a little bit about some numerical uh, benefits. And then we're going to put it all together with fingerprinting and cross-training. So the little bit of history that we have here, um, Microtech has been using forms of uh, machine learning for a long time. And we've seen certain fads in artificial intelligence come and go. And what all of these uh, earlier uh, attempts at artificial intelligence shared, and we now call those sorts of nets shallow nets, which I think is uh, perhaps a little judgmental, but what it means is that they don't have deep layers. And because they don't have deep layers, you can't just show them high resolution images and expect them to make sense of it. Human beings had to go and they had to boil down some important features in an image and simplify it before feeding it to these simple nets. And so, for example, you couldn't send a 1,000 pixel image of a number five to a net to learn. You might blur it and take the average in those and send 16 pixels of information instead. Now, what, what set of these features are important, it is limited by the cleverness of a human being. But with the advent of deep neural nets, we, uh, the researchers were able to beat the state of the art by a substantial amount. And what you see on this graph is that in 2012, a net called AlexNet uh, beat the state of the art by a substantial margin in that in just a few years we're surpassing human recognition of images and of course enabled uh, us to detect cats on the internet which out which human civilization would apparently collapse. So this is an example of a deep net and uh, we call it deep. You can see that there are some layers here and I won't go into the details of this technology, but what it does is it allows us to feed high resolution images in the, in, in the beginning of this net. And the net by itself from example and labels will figure out what to do with this information and come up with converging answers to what you want. As long as you give it enough information, it will get there. Uh, also enabling this technology was the advent of GPUs, graphical processing units, which came to us from the gaming industry. 
but they're essentially highly parallel supercomputers for a few hundred bucks in a PC. So uh, at Microtech, we looked at what was going on in the industry. In this case, you're seeing recognition of parts of the human body. You're seeing bicycles recognized, horses, and of course, autonomous driving here on the right. This is uh, examples of what's called semantic segmentation. Unlike object detection, which just puts a box around something, this identifies each pixel boundary and puts a class for those pixels. And we'll see in some of the examples on wood why this gives better information than just a box. But we looked at this at Microtech and we said, hmm, I wonder if we could do this in wood. And why would we do this? Well, deep learning AI, as I've said, you don't have to have human beings crafting and be clever in order to get good answers. It's the same thing every time, just showed a lot of examples and uh, label them and train it and you'll get a good answer. Um, you'll get better answers than you ever did with shallow nets and they'll be more accurate. So what were the challenges going into this? Well, we didn't know if we'd have to label a million images per species. Thank goodness that wasn't the case. And just a few hundred to a few thousand. Uh, we had to identify the best models and we had to figure out how to do it real time. Well, of course we overcame these challenges and it became more of a data handling and a labeling problem. And so at Microtech, we have way better than 50 man years of labeling of log and lumber, uh, tens of thousands of faces. We have big teams of people doing this. We also have other ways of doing this, which I'll discuss a little bit later. All right, we're gonna go to some examples of deep uh, learning uh, recognition in action, again, from log to lumber. And we're going to track this through examples in the log yard, the saw line, the green and planer mill, and down to secondary processing. So first, the CT log recognition. So uh, Microtech offers a full computer-aided tomography of logs. And so in this case, we're doing semantic segmentation, not for pixels, but 3D objects that are called voxels. It's the same idea, though, in the output of a neural net train for these uh, becomes a probability map that you see in the clouds there. We'll threshold this probability map in order to detect, in this case, knots. Um, for a CT scanner, we've also trained uh, to recognize the bark that will be taken off and outside of a log. Uh, we'll, we have detected wormholes and bug holes. Um, the resolution of a CT scanner is on the order of a millimeter. Uh, but detecting something like this within a log in a 3D scan can only be done with deep learning AI. It has to be very accurate. Uh, similarly, we are able to detect metal within logs and we are able to recognize species. Down in the saw line, we have a scanner called the Log I300 series. This scanner has a 2D X-ray rather than 3D. It has color cameras that look at the end of the log and the outside of the log and it has 3D triangulation. We're able to employ deep learning nets. In this case, you see an example of finding uh, rot on the end of a log. We can also find blue stain, brown stain, cracks on the end, uh, the location of the pith, anything that you would need to grade a log from the end of the log, we're finding with deep learning AI. Here's an example of a transverse scanner in the green mill or the dry mill. In this case, again, finding wormholes. And wormholes can be um, very difficult to find because sometimes they can look like a little smear on the board, but they're one of these defects that you have to get just right. A false positive or missing one can cause you to be catastrophically off grade. For instance, some, some grades of wood will only allow one wormhole or zero wormholes on the whole piece. So you can't get it wrong. The only way to do this is with deep learning AI. Here's another example of a type of defect for which the consequences of missing it or doing a false one are large. This is called timber break. And uh, as you can see, sometimes it's more obvious like the one in the middle, sometimes it's more subtle like the one towards the top. But again, just one of these will change the grade from the highest grade to the lowest grade. You have to be just right. We've never found a way to do this without deep learning AI. Here's an example of uh, more semantic segmentation. This, this case from a high-speed planar scanner, lineal. Uh, what you're seeing there on the left is blue stain detection. You see classification of a knot into a live part, bark encasement around it, and resin surrounding the knot. Here's another case. This is a progression of decay 
this case Doug Fur, again in a planar scanner, and uh, exotic names of these forms of progression of decay from white speck to honeycomb to unsound wood. Our customers want to know this progression because each of these have different rules associated with them. You can use deep learning AI for appearance grades as well. In this case, we have to tell harmless uh, heart speck from blonde bird's eye, from dark bird's eye. They show up differently through lacquer and stains. Here's an example of a scanner uh, log I 500 that would be out in the planer, for example, or a cut up plant. And this is crack detection. If we were to uh, put a um, box around this, it would take up a lot of the board and perhaps you couldn't put parts around it. But because we're finding every pixel in a class, we can go ahead and fit parts snug up to it and create more value in that piece. And finally, this is a case that's not semantic segmentation. With deep learning AI, we've been able to train neural networks to uh, be able to do what we call aesthetic sorting. This is a case of hardwood parquet put together in combinations for flooring. And not just in any combination, it's a combination that's pleasing to the human eye and that meets certain criteria that aren't specified in rules, but it's basically like, this is what we're after. And so by example, we want your machine to learn this. And uh, we've been able to accomplish this with a high degree of accuracy. There's not another way to do it. So a, a quick case study where we've compared AI to non-AI, this case in secondary processing. And what we were after was to say, uh, for this cut-up plant, what is the amount of savings that we get using AI? And we saw that we were able to reduce our error to a quarter of without AI, and that had an effect on grade of making it about one-sixth a reduction in the error rate on grade. This would vary, of course, to the application, but it's just one number to throw out there and show the benefits. So I'm going to leave you today with another um, idea, which is uh, we're using something that we call fingerprinting to track lumber. Uh, our brand name for this is Microtech Connect. And I won't go into the details so much of this. You can come to our booths in halls 25 and 27 and get the full story. But essentially, we can track virtual boards that are from logs from the CT, track them through every scanner all the way out to the end of your plant, and we can match these boards at every stage. Now, what does this allow us to do with AI? Well, what it allows us to do is that because our boards are matched and our defects overlay at every stage, if one scanner is better at detecting something than another, we can use the data from that scanner to train another one. Remember that deep learning it's very data hungry, and this can mean collecting a lot of data. That's expensive. It's a hassle for the mill operators. But in this case, we can leverage our multiple scanners and our fingerprinting technology to have them train each other. So I'll show this by example. Here's a case where a CT scan is able to see heartwood easily within a log. Uh, however, it's very difficult to see the heartwood on the visual scanner. But what if we can detect uh, the heartwood in the CT, match it exactly to the position in hundreds of thousands of boards, and train a neural network to go ahead and recognize that, and then use it on the visual scanner, the outputs. And that's what we've done. The CT detected heartwood is on the bottom. We trained a neural network with thousands of examples, and there's some uh, results from a trained neural net and the uh, results on this particular board. Again, we did this without um, without having a human label. We did this, we brought more value to the mill because we got a great answer, a better answer, quicker. Another example goes the other way. A visual scanner can see blue stain, but the CT can't see blue stain so well. So what we can do, we match the board, we take the blue stain from the visual scanner, we take it back to the CT, and that becomes our labeled data for training the voxel space. One final example is a board scanner can see a dead knot, Again, we're going to go back here from uh, a visual scanner and go back to the CT. The transition from a live knot to a dead knot is not so clear to our labeling team in a CT, but it's important for the value getting the right board cuts out of the log. So again, we can find it in the board and we can go backwards to the labeling of the CT. So in conclusion, deep learning AI, it's embedded in every one of Microtech scanners from log to the final product. It improves everything we found, but it's essential for a lot of defects that are catastrophic and the only way to do it. Deep learning needs lots of data, and we can help with that with our fingerprinting and our connection for cross-training.
Uh, the bottom line is that it brings more value to the mill's bottom line. Thank you, and any questions? Thank you, Mr. Freeman, for having you here on our stage and for your interesting presentation. So do we have any question from the audience or from the live stream? Feel free. <laughs> so we have a microphone for you. If not, we have a short break till 2.40, and then we see us again here on stage. Thank you.